So now that we've learned about refraction, we can use some practical applications of refraction by beginning to talk about lenses. And we talk about thin lenses, because um, when they become thicker, some of the rules and, and uh, formulas we're using don't apply. So we're generally going to be considered lenses that are thin in the middle. Um, this is a, a website resource that has a lot of good information on lenses, if you want to check it out for further information. The physics Classroom is generally a great site anyway. Okay, so we're going to start with a converging lens, which is biconvex, uh, but we don't really usually typically describe it that way. We just say it's converging. Um, and you know it's converging because it is thin on the outside and thick in the middle. So if a lens is thin on the outside, thick in the middle, then it's going to be a converging lens. And the idea of the converging lens is that the rays are going to come together uh, when they refract and meet at a focal point. They're going to converge or come together. Um, this lens on the left is a conventional lens. Um, it's actually much thicker than it would typically be, but it shows you how the light is refracting. And the one on the right is called a Fresnel lens, which is especially engineered uh, with little jagged edges that have the same effect of causing light to be uh, converging at a focal point without the, the weight of a typical lens. So it's kind of a clever engineering design. But we're going to take a look a little bit about how converging lenses work from a refraction perspective. So if we take a look at this lens on the left, as you have the light coming in, so the light comes in along here, and then it hits a boundary, um, which is glass or plastic. And so we look at the normal, which is perpendicular to the boundary, and we see that the light is going to refract towards the normal. And that's what it's going to do when it hits something that's more optically dense. So it starts in air, hits the glass, and then bends towards the normal. And then it gets to the other boundary on the opposite side, and it hits the normal, um, and now it's going to refract away from the normal. And so you set up the geometry of a converging lens so that it's symmetric on both sides. Actually, it doesn't have to be, but in this case it is. Um, and so the light rays are going to come out, and any ray that comes in parallel is going to refract inside the lens and then come out through the focal point. So in parallel, out through the focal point. Should sound familiar. We did the same kind of discussions with mirrors. If we start in the lens on the right, the idea is that if the light is starting at the focal point, it's going to be coming out uh, towards the lens, it's going to refract through the lens, and it's going to go out parallel. So you say from the focal point into the lens, out parallel. So there's that symmetry there. In parallel, out to the focal point, in from the focal point, out parallel. And we'll use these kinds of um, ideas to be making ray diagrams for <coughs> converging and diverging lenses as well. Let's take a look at diverging lens. Remember, a diverging lens is going to be thin in the middle and thick on the outside, um, opposite to a converging lens. And let's look what happens to the rays that come in. So a ray comes in, it hits the boundary, you look at the normal, and because it's glass, it's going to go towards the normal, and then it hits another boundary, and it's going to go away from the normal when it gets out to the air. And so right rays that come in parallel to a diverging lens are going to diverge and move away. And so what we do is we think, okay, well, if those rays are moving away, where do they seem to have come from? Where did they originate? And so we back up those rays, and they seem to have come from a point behind, or in front of in this case, in front of the lens which is its focal point. So <clears throat> the diverging lens has a negative focal length because it appears as if the rays, they don't go forward and converge, they seem to have come from something that was behind the lens or behind where the rays have come out. So we say it has a negative focal point. And that's a really important um, thing to remember when we're talking about uh, using lens equations and solving problems. So negative focal points for diverging lenses. Um, lenses, both converging and diverging, are going to have focal points on either side of the lens, um, and typically they're symmetric. So you have a focal point over here, you're going to have another focal point over there. Same thing with a converging lens. A converging lens has a focal point over here and a focal point over there, um, depending on which side the rays are coming from. So if the rays come this way, they're going to go out through this focal point. If the rays come this way, they're going to go out through that focal point. Um, so uh, we consider lenses having two different focal points. Again, they're positive when you're talking about converging lenses and negative when you're talking about diverging lenses. 
Uh, one other thing to think about, when you have rays that go straight through the center of a lens, then they come in and they go straight on through without being refracted at all. So uh, when you're doing ray diagrams, when we did mirrors, remember we said you go in through the center and then back? Uh, with lenses, you can go straight through the center and out the other side, and that helps you in your ray diagram. So that's true with both converging and diverging lenses. Any rays that come into the center go straight on through. So we have several different types of converging and diverging lenses. Um, we can have the biconvex lens that we see right here, which is really thick in the middle and thin on the outside. Or we can have a convex planar. So this is flat on one side and convex on the other. Um, and that will also converge. And this one actually is convex and then concave. As long as it's thicker in the middle and thinner on the outside, it's going to be a converging lens. And you can imagine that this is the kind of lens right here that you'd probably put on a contact lens because it's going to fit over the surface of your eye. So if you need to have a contact lens um, that would be converging, you'd probably wear something like that. All of these are going to have focal points that are you know, positive and on the other side of the lens. Um, so here's a look at some different diverging lenses. This is bi-concave. Uh, um, and so you could have concave planar and you could have concave convex. But uh, as long as it's thinner in the middle and thicker on the outside, then you have a diverging lens. So we have eye conditions where you can't see very well, um, nearsightedness and farsightedness. Um, and so we're going to need to use corrective lenses to try, to try to fix the problems. Incidentally, in case you don't know, hyperopia is another word for farsightedness. That's when you can see things really far away, but you can't see things very close. Myopia is another term for nearsightedness, so when you can see things really close, but not so far away. Um, so let's look at what's happening in each of these cases. We'll start with the, the hyperopia. <clears throat> People who are farsighted, there are refractive um, capabilities of your, of your cornea, and then again of your lens. Here's your lens, here's your cornea, and each of those has some refractive power. Um, but if those, if your lens and cornea is not set up anatomically so that the rays will focus exactly on the back of your retina, which is where you'd want it to focus right about there. Oh, I'm trying to do it in red. Right about there. That's where you want it to focus. In hyperopia, it focuses behind the retina a little bit. Um, and so it's hard for you to see things that are near. Um, and you can actually change the, the, the focal point of this lens in here by, by squeezing it and making it thicker, but um, there are limits of how much you can change it. So if you can't change it enough, you can't see things close up. <clears throat> so if you want to correct farsightedness, then you're going to put a lens out in front. And if you think about it, if hyperopia fo focuses behind the retina, you want to bring it a little closer so that it will focus right here on the retina. So you want to take those rays that were coming in parallel and you want to converge them so that they come a little bit closer and focus instead on the retina instead of behind the retina. And so when you wear a converging lens, uh, if you're hyperopic, you'll be able to move that focal point to your retina. Uh, now conversely with myopia, you have uh, you, your lens is actually focusing too far in front of the retina and you want to be focusing it back on the retina. So you want, to, you want to spread out those rays a little bit so that they will focus on the retina instead of in front of the retina. So if you want to spread them out, then you're going to have to put a diverging lens out front. Now this is kind of shaped so that it would fit over your cornea uh, or your glasses if you're wearing uh, glasses versus contact lenses. <clears throat> Again, this is thicker on the outside, thinner in the middle, so it's a diverging lens. This causes the rays that are coming in from far away, um, causes them to spread out a little bit, and then they're refracted by the cornea and the lens, and, um, and then they will land on the, on the retina, and you'll have corrected your vision. People have presbyopia, that's what I have. Uh, older people, what happens is this lens that's right here is malleable. And as you get older, it becomes less malleable, so stiffer, and it's harder to squeeze it and, and make it thicker in the middle so it can accommodate. Um, so it gets m less malleable, and these muscles here that actually do the squeezing, they get tired and worn out, and they are not able to push the lens as much any either. So um, people who have presbyopia, that becomes farsightedness because um, the, the lenses are no longer to be converging enough. Um, and so we become farsighted. We have to use reading glasses after a certain period of time. <clears throat> so for myopia, if you're nearsighted, 
uh, you'd want a diverging lens. A uh, typical prescription for a nearsighted person might be like a minus one diopter, minus two, minus two and a half. So if you look at your contact lens box, or if you know your prescription if you wear glasses, a typical nearsighted person would be minus two, minus two and a half. Um, and minus, keep in mind, is because it's a diverging lens. And we talked about diverging lens have negative focal points. A diopter is one over the focal point in meters. So if you are a minus 2.5, then you take 1 over minus 1 over 2.5 which is about 0.4 or 40 centimeters so you, you would uh, a 2.5 lens has a focal point of 40 centimeters if you're hyperopic uh, or far sighted then you would need a converging lens in order to focus those rays which is going to be a plus focal point um, and so you have like maybe a plus 3 uh, prescription if you're far sighted <clears throat> now interesting to note if you've read the book Lord of the Flies um, Piggy is one of the central characters, and Piggy was myopic. They talk about him being myopic. Um, and uh, I think at one point they try to take his glasses and use them to start a fire, um, thinking that they are magnifying glasses. But unfortunately that wouldn't work because if he is myopic, he would have a diverging lens. And you cannot start a fire with a diverging lens. You would need a converging lens to start a fire. So author of uh, Lord of the Flies, not a physicist, but it was a good story anyway. So, what do you think this guy is? Nearsighted or farsighted? Take a look at the glasses. What do you see? Are his eyes being magnified? Are they being minified? Those look like giant magnifying glasses to me, which would make those converging lenses. And if they're converging lenses, then he is probably farsighted. Okay, now the good news is that we use the same lens equations that we use for mirrors when we're dealing with uh, calculating uh, lens equations uh, for lenses, whether they're converging or diverging. So 1 over P is the object distance again, 1 over Q is the image, and 1 over F is the focal point. The key to remember when dealing with lenses is that F is negative when you're dealing with a diverging lens. Also, Q, if Q ends up on the same side of the lens, as the object. So if the object is here and the image is here on the same side, then Q is considered negative. Okay? If Q ends up over here, then Q is going to be positive. So that's the sign convention when we're dealing with lenses. So Q is negative. If, it, if the image appears on the same side as the object, then that's considered a negative Q. And um, we'll do some practice. Okay, so we'll start off with a ray diagram here with a converging lens. It gets a little bit confusing until you practice a little bit, but same kind of idea we do with mirrors. We're going to take a ray. We're going to go in to the, to the, into the lens, parallel, in parallel. And notice when we, when we do ray diagrams with lenses, we don't show the refraction that happens. Like, really, this thing is going to refract a little bit and it's going to bend. But we don't show that in the ray diagram. We just say, okay, in parallel, out through the focal point. Okay, in parallel, out through the focal point. And then we're going to go in through the other focal point, And then we're going to go out parallel. And those two rays intersect, those rays cross. And that should be a dead giveaway that we're talking about a real image, because when rays cross, that means you have a real image. We have one more ray that we can add, which goes right through the center. And all three of those should intersect at the same place, creating an upside-down image over here, or inverted dead giveaway again, that that is a real image. You can tell because it's upside-down, it is on the opposite side of the lens, and all of these rays cross. Okay, I'm going to pause this video now and have part two coming up in just a minute.